This is my latest writing, which I just started distributing in the Indianapolis, Indiana area very recently. I have other writings, which I've talked about in some other videos, that I'm still distributing also, but this is the latest writing. It's headed, The Abomination of Desolation Bailout Time. And underneath that heading, there are three pictures. One of the pictures is of what has been called the Supreme Court of Israel. Another picture is of Benjamin Netanyahu, who has been called Israel's Prime Minister. And the last picture is of a part of Old Jerusalem with some people standing in the foreground with weapons. And I'm going to set this down and read this to you. Underneath the pictures in smaller print so that I could fit it underneath the pictures I have written the court which is without the temple is given to the Gentiles and when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies then know that the desolation is at hand and I'll go on and read the rest of this there's an ugly rumor amongst certain Gentiles that Solomon's temple must be rebuilt for the abomination of desolation to take place but my Lord foretold of the abomination standing in the holy place and God never dwelled in temples made with hands for both Isaiah in the Old Testament and Paul in the New let us know this very thing Isaiah 66 verses 1 and 2 thus saith the Lord the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool where is the house that ye build unto me and where is the place of my rest for all those things hath mine hand made, and those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Therefore, God's footstool alone would not fit in any temple made with the hands of man. And Paul in Acts agreed with Isaiah. Acts 17:24. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Now a big part of all this temple confusion started because David, who numbered Israel for Satan, said Solomon would build God's house and courts in 1 Chronicles chapter 28. But, God let David know in 2 Samuel chapter 7 that after David slept with his fathers, he, God, would set up the seed after him that would build his house with no courts mentioned there. And Christ, the cornerstone, builds with lively stones and not hewn stones. 1 Peter 2 verses 3 to 8. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Hewn stones are what masons build with. So with these things in mind, when do we know that the desolation is at hand? Yes, when we see old Jerusalem compassed with armies, as was foretold us. Luke 21, verses 20 and 21. 
And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. You see, when something called Israel was established as a nation by certain men in 1948, a lot of people thought that nation was made up of God's chosen people. But God is no respecter of persons. And in every nation, those who work righteousness are accepted by him that the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ that they might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. God draws who He will, when He will, out of the nations. Consider also what Paul said to the saints at Ephesus. He told them that they were in time past Gentiles in the flesh, because it was after their hearts were circumcised in the Spirit. And Benjamin Netanyahu of Satan's synagogue was never circumcised in the heart by the circumcision of Christ. When Benjamin justifies mass murder for his ethnic cleansing practices, he reveals himself and damns himself by law that was made for murderers. It doesn't matter what his national origin is, his kind, whether white, black, red or yellow are an abomination to God. I mean, is someone like David Berkowitz chosen by God over a righteous Australian or a righteous Native American? God is not a racist. Romans 2:28 and 29. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. So the abomination lies within the desolate, who are defiled due to their own unrighteousness. 1 Corinthians 3.17 If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Likewise, old Jerusalem's house is left spiritually desolate. Matthew 23, verses 37 and 38. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. New Jerusalem which comes down from heaven is the holy city and a completely different city than old Jerusalem and unholy old Jerusalem is turned to heaps Jeremiah 9 11 and I will make Jerusalem heaps and a den of dragons and I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant so let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains and watch Jezebel's Judaism, Ahab's Islam, and Kufi's Judeo-Christianity all come to nothing at old Jerusalem's utter destruction. True authorities don't fight against truth. And I care to add that the saints don't rob the poor just to feed IRS 501c3 false charities either. So get to know a saint. We're putting Catholic charities out of tax business. And I signed it, St. Michael, power that be, ordained of God. And I have www.iwarwiththebeast.blogspot.com next to that on the very bottom. Yes, I wasn't elected by voters or through the Vatican or some other corrupt agency to be ordained of God. This is what I was led to talk about today. Thank you.